everyone and welcome to this week's Scuba Tube. In today's show we're going to talk about a jellyfish that looks like a firework, governments uh, abandoning rays to die, uh, and how poop is saving the seas. Uh, and also a new segment to, uh, to Scuba Tube where we look at the weird and wonderful scuba gear on Kickstarter. And yeah, um, just pull it to pieces basically. Yep. Um, so, uh, so let's go straight into it. So our first story is all about a rare jellyfish that lives 4,000 feet under the water. And it's super cool because it looks like a firework. <laughs> the jellyfish appeared on Blue Planet 2 later last year and, and has got a lot of people mesmerized by it. Yeah, so, uh, so the jellyfish can be found in waters off California near Mexico. Uh, the funny thing is, is that they never went out into the waters to film that type of jellyfish. Uh, they just came across it by accident. Uh, the jellyfish creates these amazing colors by moving nutrients through its belly. It's if weird. it has belly. Yes, it's uh, weird, yes. Uh, which, uh, which foams, forms, forms uh, a starburst pattern uh, when the ROV lights shined on it. So, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a weird thing, it's a cool thing, it's very mesmerizing, like, say, with the tentacles or whatever, just go, so you get that, that like a flower. So anyway, so now the mission is to find out more about this jellyfish, so the scientists can find more about the biological and the geological data and what impact it has on the ocean, considering they weren't even looking for it. I it know. was a happy, happy accident. Yeah, they do that every time they go down in one of those deep submersibles. They're like, oh, look at that. Yeah, we've never seen that before. Oh, look, Pepsi can. Uh, okay, the Australian government have been accused of deliberately abandoning rays that have been trapped in Balina shark nets. Uh, so a sea shepherd was uh, refused permission to go into the waters and cut them free as well. That sucks. Yeah, so they're looking at it. No. Yeah, there's one there. Snip, snip. No, you can't go down. Uh, so, um, yeah, sort of rubbing salt into the wound. Uh, neither the contractor nor fisheries uh, will be re uh, releasing the rays found or uh, any others get caught in the nets. So they're just kind of like, meh. If it gets caught, it gets caught. Yeah, it's exactly that. So a boat has been running along the, the nets since December and, and every time the boat goes out, they always find animals tangled up in the net, even though it's meant to sharks. Well, it's kind of meant to stop sharks, sharks getting through, not catch them. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously, marine, other marine life gets caught. Gets caught, so, yeah. Uh, so uh, there, there's always a fine line when it comes to keeping the waters safe for us humans uh, and sea life, but uh, but maybe they need to start looking at modern day alternatives that keep sharks away from popular beaches that won't also hurt sea life. What they need to do is, you know those cat, that people put it on their lawns, the cat noises that they can't hear, just do that. Just find a specific tone that sharks don't like. Well, they've already created, we did it a few weeks ago, where there was like magnetic kelp that someone had created. And uh, basically the sharks don't like it because it goes with their lateral yeah. line, but stuff can swim through it. There you go. There you go, Australia. <clears throat> Electronic kelp. But hopefully you do that properly so you don't electrify the water. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about something new we want to do with the show. Now, Mark. You're a wealth of knowledge when it comes to scuba gear. So next week, I would like you to do gear reviews, please. Uh, yeah, that's a good plan. Um, but, uh, but why don't we let our viewers decide? <laughs> <laughs> mum, my mum can't decide anything. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna set up a, uh, a poll, which should, uh, which should have just popped up now, like with a above us or yeah, down, like um, which has got three products. Now the products will, uh, with the most votes, will give a nice, or will sort of produce a nice detailed review in next week's show. All the pros and the cons, just whether you should buy it or not. Yeah, because obviously, we, we obviously every day or every other day, there's a product video. Um, we have comments like recently on like, oh, why do you always say about the positives? Like, because it's a product video, it's not a review. All we're doing is, all you're doing is going through, this is what it's features, this is what it's, this got. Is what it's got. Yeah just to give you an idea of, of whether you want to purchase it or not. But you want the negative. So what we're going to do, yeah, is to say, Mark, we're going to put three three products on there, one with the highest uh, vote, well, then, yeah, well, you say we, it'll be <laughs> you. It won't be me, I'll be like, it looks you really nice. It. <laughs> yeah, I'll be the glamorous assistant. Anyway, so yeah, that does sound like a plan, but if you're watching this on Facebook and want to give it a vote, obviously you've got to head over to our YouTube channel to get voting, so yeah, head over there. Okay, so let's talk about our last story, and we're gonna talk about whale poop. 
because Sean wrote the script. Uh, so, <laughs> so the iron in whale poop may hold the key to saving ocean researchers' belief. Saving, yeah, saving, saving the, the ocean. ocean researchers' belief. All right, comma, comma. Ah, uh, iron is of course a vital. Uh, uh, <laughs> do you reckon why I didn't put it? <laughs> Iron is, of course, a vital micronutrient for phytoplankton growth and photosynthesis. Oh, look, this is my line now. The dust, as it's <laughs> called, contains between 3 to 5% of iron, which goes, uh, which seems like a good amount. Of course, like anything, the ocean has dropped massively over the years, and actually, a massive 25% so far in the past decade. Uh, of, of this, this dust has gone gone down. Yeah, so anyway, it's pretty bad. So saving whales, of course, is vital, but whale poop is just as important. No, so what does that say? That's a sentence I thought I would never have to say. Yeah, whale poop. Yeah, we need more whale poop. We need more whale poop. <clears throat> uh, if we can help restore or control the iron in the ocean, that means that ocean plankton will flourish. Uh, fish levels, in turn, will grow. And then when the, uh, the plankton dies, it floats to the it floats to the bottom, Sean. It sinks it to the bottom. It sinks to the bottom, taking with it uh, its CO2. I would like to point out this last bit. I did write this morning and I had no buckle. <laughs> uh, so what really needs to happen is to reduce commercial fishing uh, and most importantly, stop whale hunting. We need yeah. the poop! Yeah, it's all the circle of life. So the whale poop feeds the, feeds the photoplankton, which then the fish eat, which then the whales eat. That turn into poo and then it goes round and round. Yeah. But without the whales, yeah, and the poop. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, which is also a story that I'm going to be talking about on uh, on Saturday with our latest episode of Daily Scuba News, <laughs> which I, I hope you guys are enjoying. But by the time this is aired, there's probably what two or two. Two of them come out. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, so this is a new part of uh, the show where we talk about the ridiculous scuba equipment that's being pushed on Kickstarter. Uh, so now we're endorsing. No, we're not. It's meant to be. We're not. <laughs> Told you, mate. Coffee. We're not endorsing. Simply Scuba does in no way endorse any of these products. Uh, we're merely taking a look to see whether it's good or not, so you don't waste your money. Uh, so what do we have this week, Sean? Well, we have the Mini Driver Prime. So, it's a mini tank that gives you the possibility of breathing underwater between five to 10 minutes, depending on your breathing pattern. Now, these things aren't new to diving. Uh, and in fact, we sell something similar to that called the Air Body Dummy Mark. Yeah, yeah. Or it, something similar, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. it's basically the same thing, except without a hose. Yeah. Um, so you've got a, a small cylinder, it's, it's just backup redundancy for scuba divers. Uh, it's just a small cylinder. It's got built-in first stage and second stage. And yeah, if you're caught short, then you just, it gives you enough breath to get to your buddy. Yeah, so literally like as, as an emergency backup. Yeah, whereas this is meant more for, I presume, cleaning boats, because there are a lot of boat owners. They don't want to go through the whole scuba course and get all the equipment. They just want something so that they can just swim under and just scrape up barnacles. Yeah. And but this is like a diving thing, supposedly selling on Kickstarter. Anyway, continue. Dangerous. Uh, so these are one of the most common things that you'll see on Kickstarter. And to be honest with you, they're uh, just kind of lost for a scuba diver. They're pointless. I mean, it's like half a litre cylinder. Yeah. You're going to use that pretty quick. Um, so uh, great for emergency, but that's about it. Uh, so now they're perfect for snorkelers. Uh, as long as you control your breathing, uh, you could get some decent bottom time. The downside is, is that for the people that it's marketed to, they don't know about long over expansion and all that kind of stuff. They're not going to read the manual. They're literally going to fill it up because it's, a, again, it's one of those you can- A bicycle pump. Bicycle pump or like a compressed gas thing, like, or, you know, what we've got here or don't have here anymore. They're going to uh, swim down, inhale, hold their breath and come up. <gasps> yeah. Fun times! Bad things happen. Uh, but again, uh, if, uh, if big scuba brands are creating these products, uh, why risk it on Kickstarter? It's, yes. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, Oceanic uh, do one at the moment. Yeah. And there's quite a lot out there. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, as I say, that's why what's up. It's a very generic one with what I picked this week because they're everywhere. So just be careful. They're interesting. They might sound fun, but yeah. Yeah. Anyway, very wise words, Mark. All right, thank you. It's all right, no worries. <laughs> it's like that's scripted. Anyway, <laughs> have you seen something strange? Uh, so have you seen some strange scuba equipment on Kickstarter? Why not give us a link in the comments and maybe we'll feature it in an episode. Yeah.
Uh, and that's the end of the show, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and I hope you enjoy the uh, the daily news as well. Uh, we're putting out a new episode sort of once a day, so yep. you get a little sort of snippet every so day. Even at the weekend, 7 a.m., you're greeted with myself, Mark, and James. Wave. Wave, James. There he is. Awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Scroll. Uh, so we're now going to end the show with a short clip of our latest video, 10 Things Dive Instructors Shouldn't Have to Keep Telling You. Uh, thanks for watching and safe diving. Bye. Qualifications don't mean experience. Just because your dive qualification says advanced open water diver doesn't mean that you're an experienced diver. Just like passing your driving test, just because you have a qualification doesn't mean you're any good. The more time you spend in the water, the better you'll be. So I don't care how many cert cards you have, I'm more interested in how many dives you have and where you've been diving.